Episode 12, Napoleon vs. Putin. This episode is dedicated to a dear Estonian friend I call Yakaru, Brian Davenport, Alexander Ignatiev, Lenny Absher, as well as Emmett Stevens. Is Putin anything like Napoleon is, is the original question. It's a good question for criminal psychologists such as the cast of the American TV show Criminal Minds with Mandy, Pat Mandy Patinkin, the guy who played the role of Inigo Montoya. A more inter interesting question here is, if Putin is similar to Napoleon, let's say that's true in the, in the true sense of the word, can Putin achieve parity with what Napoleon achieved before Napoleon died? Let's explore these characters uh, a little bit. Napoleon's background is, well, there's a, a lot more history that's here, obviously. Napoleon, who was actually born in 1769, and he passed away in 1821, he was actually born in, uh, in Italy, technically because Corsica was originally part of Italy before it became part of France. So therefore, his original name was Napoleon Bonaparte. Hey! So, as he grew up, he accomplished a lot of different things. He was part of the French Revolutionary Wars, uh, which was from 1792 to 1802, so reign of terror times. France versus Russia. Austria and a variety of other Italian states because Italy wasn't really a, a united a united country until a little bit later on it's in the, a little bit later on if you will he also took over Egypt Belgium Holland Italy Austria and also various parts of Germany because G Germany became a united federation of states uh, probably around after uh, he was either was he a baron or prince let's go with prince prince uh, Otto von Bismarck's time uh, let's say rule Poland and Spain, Poland, when, when Poland actually existed, because you have to keep in mind, Poland actually for a, a certain period of time did not exist as a country, even though the constitution still lasted. Henceforth, the Polish constitution, the, the constitution day being a national holiday for them. Let's look at uh, Putin a little bit. His official, well, based on what we know, his official name is Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, born in, uh, in October of 1952. And so, Unlike Napoleon, who was originally by birth an ethnic Italian, this guy is an ethnic Russian because he was actually born in Leningrad, originally St. Petersburg. And he, made a, he got his start uh, as part of the KGB. KGB Komitet Gosudarst Venoy Besotsnosti. Did I get it right? Sure. Okay. He achieved the, the, the military rank of Podpolkovnik, which is sub or under uh, sub or under the uh, so under colonel. Uh, so to be Slavic about it, and which was and, and because KGB was really doing intelligence as well as internal security kinds of work, you have to keep keep in mind, KGB had additional roles aside from what the CIA had. So if you were to combine CIA and DHS. Department of Homeland Security for the American folks together. That's essentially what KGB was responsible for. But he was more of a combat support type of a type of an officer because he was involved in intelligence work until 1991 when he was 39 years old. He dropped out of this KGB work so that he could get involved in politics. So dictators being dictators, let's be honest about this. He let's see. Under his rule, he's essentially got Russia involved in taking over different parts of Ukraine, Georgia, Tajikistan, and also Chechnya. How similar are these people to each other? Well, we both know that they were both military officers, although the U.S. Army, uh, the way the U.S. Army defines combat arms versus combat support would essentially put Napoleon into one category, a higher category as far as prestige is concerned, and uh, put in the lower category based on how that's how the u.s army promotes as uh, it promotes its people to the point where it's really combat arms people people who are part of the combat arms branch who be, who end up becoming in charge of the uh, being responsible for the whole of army as the chief of staff of the army they both use propaganda uh, <coughs> to a certain ex uh, to a certain effect they both got involved in politics one way or another and they also had a habit of invading other countries that's pretty much where the similarities end. When you look at the differences between the two, it's very easy to, uh, to dismiss uh, let's see, this, this question, but let's be rigorous about this. Napoleon, after he, he graduated from the, uh, the French mil uh, military academy 
Ecole Militaire. I guess that's an approximate, uh, approximate translation. I think it's, uh, no, it's not Ecole Militaire. It would have been uh, Academy saint or something like that. Close. He was basically commissioned as a second lieutenant or as a lieutenant in the combat arms or artillery branch. Whereas Putin, he was part of combat support, according to U.S. Army's definition, as an intelligence officer type. Napoleon was uh, achieved the rank of lieutenant colonel at the age of 23, and, but Putin was stuck as, as a podpokovnik until he was 39 years old. With respect to, pol- uh, so with respect to spreading uh, see, French mentality all, wherever it is uh, they went, or he went, you've got the Napoleonic Code that was adopted by different Western European countries who spoke different languages. It was so effective and so well adopted to the point where Holland or Netherlands, you had people <coughs> who had to finally adopt last names for taxation, uh, so basically for, that's for tracking, let's see, how many, uh, tracking who had to pay what amount of taxes. This is why when you go to, to Holland, you meet people with names that when you actually, uh, let's see, so, uh, do the translation, It'll sound a little bit strange, such as Nacht geboren, which is Dutch for born naked, Van Zee, from the sea, Van der Hove, yes, from, uh, from the hill. Van is technically not, a, is not officially part of the last name, by the way. It's just a, like, um, let's see, nobility kind of a thing, such as Von, Von Trapp, uh, and, and so forth. Oh, yes, Napoleon was a general, whereas... Putin, Popokotnik. With respect to how, as how these two, two the dictators have used, as have used um, propaganda in the past, think about the, this, uh, the painting called Napoleon and Marengo. It was paint, originally painted by Jacques Louis David. Yeah, well, technically, as Napoleon has commissioned as this, uh, this painter to, to basically paint a very flattering uh, portrait of Napoleon on top of, uh, of his white horse Marengo. And these paintings are, are still remain famous artistic-wise and are still, uh, as are still in famous museums all around the world. And by the way, this is clearly not how things happened when uh, Napoleon and his forces let's say, went over the Caspian Pass because it was actually Napoleon sitting on a, on a mule guide, as, uh, being led by a Swiss guide. <coughs> after all, how can Marengo be so, uh, so white? After, uh, after just marching over the pa- Caspian Pass. You'd expect uh, some dirt here and there. Whereas, if you look at Putin, Putin, I'm sure Putin has used uh, different kinds of propaganda within Russia, that, but people outside of Russia still are not too familiar with them. With the exception of Sergei Kalinik's 2011 Super Putin Men, Men Like Any Other comic book series. It's where, it's, the short short version is Putin, he's such a, He's shaped bald, and he wears a, a karate gi uh, so to, uh, to basically do different kinds of heroic acts on behalf of the Russian people. With respect to, uh, so to the highest uh, titles achieved, Napoleon, he basically self-crowned, him, self-crowned himself as a emperor after the 1799 coup in France. Whereas, uh, whereas Putin, he's essentially had to trade the different, uh, uh, trade the different, or rotate between being a prime minister, president, depending on the election cycles. Whose culture has fared throughout the better throughout the world? Now the French have a, a several hundred a several hundred years worth of a, of a head start on this, for mainly because of better climate, better let's see, better abilities to grow, let's say, grow uh, crops. And a bunch of other, let's see, uh, reasons that you will find highlighted in the book called Guns, Germs, and Steel, written by, let's see, so written by um, Jared Diamond. And let's see, Russia, there's a, as their most productive uh, see, so land is capable of, of producing one season's worth of, uh, of wheat per Peter Zahan. And his book called the, uh, the End of the World is Just Beginning. Now, let's see, as far as French versus Russian. French was so popular is even the Romanov, uh, the dynasty of the Russian Empire, e- even they spoke French. You'd be hard for us to, uh, to find any French kings and queens who uh, elected to learn Russian. And as far as movies go, Gerard Depardieu movies, very popular in, in France. Uh, 
let's see, La Femme de Sauce is one. Another one uh, is, let's see, Tetois, or if for the American audience, uh, Ruby and Quentin. And even Gerard uh, Depardieu made some uh, movies in Hollywood, such as My Father the Hero, as well as Green Card. If you look, uh, if you try to look for famous actors coming from Russia, well, there's Yul Brynner. He actually came from Vladivostok, which is the let's see, which is more, that's more the Alaska side of things. But he made his frame fame in Hollywood and not in, not in Russia. Let's look at art. Well, there is a famous Russian artist who uh, made great uh, contributions to the to the arts of, uh, as far as Western civilization is concerned. But he only did so after fleeing Stalinist Russia. Moisha Chagall, aka Mark Chagall, as was so he was he was able to, uh, to take his talents and basically apply them to, to the Paris Opera House and and have his works be featured in America and in a few other countries too. Let's look at music. There's a there's a lot more French musicians. Maurice Ravel is one of them, and another one would be, let's, the list is just way too long. And, and if you want to study this, please, let's, uh, please go take a class. Now let's look at <coughs> Russian uh, classical musicians. Igor Fyodorovich Stravinsky, he was technically a French citizen. And also Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, even though he wrote most of his compositions in Russian, even his, uh, even his Queen of Spades opera had the Countess singing in Francais. Literature. You had Victor Hugo's Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is very long, written all in French. Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace, half of it was written in French. Think about fashion. You got Coco Chanel versus... Mm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on this. Cuisine. You got French croissant. And the French croissant is so prevalent in other parts of the world. You go to Amer you go to an American fast food restaurant, uh, let's see, fast food eatery called Burger King, and their breakfast sandwiches are served on a croissant. It's called a croissant witch. And yes, right about now, there's a bunch of French colleagues who are basically screaming bloody murder. But it's still popular. But then, uh, and then when you look at Russian, Russian cuisine, you got the kozinatsky, which is tra lo loosely translates into cream baskets. And then when it comes to, let's say, French cuisine, you got herbs for a whole, a whole bar variety of herbs. Go from Marseille all the way up to, oh, all the way up to Normandy, and you'll find, uh, you'll find a medley of, uh, of herbs no matter where you go. Russia, it's pretty much still anything. Alcohols, liquors. Now let's let, let's give Russia, Russia a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a helping hand here. Let's look at vodkas. Who makes better vodka? Well, the French are also famous for Syrah vodka made with French grapes. I think they're called champagne grapes or something like that. And then, if you were to compare this to Tua Stolichnaya, aka Russian tap water, uh, no messy. But I know this is not a fair comparison, but let's, let, let's be objective about this. Even the Ukrainians make better vodka for the money compared to, to Russian Stolichnaya. And here's an example, Nemirov vodka. It definitely is a sure, as a sure is a great vodka for the money. Uh, let's see, I think in Ukraine it's called the Hryvnia. <laughs> All right, let's look at motorcycles. French, do you know of any motorcycles? No, I don't. You go to Russia, well, they have a, uh, they've got a very the good motorcycle, well, a very interesting motorcycle with a sidecar called the Ural. And thanks to Matt Kaufman for this reference. All right, let's go look at weapons. Okay, okay. I don't know of any uh, such French companies that are f f famous, for, uh, f famous for weapons. You've got the Mirage, that's an airplane, but uh, which relies on a lot of parts made elsewhere. Whereas Russia, yes, you've got the MiGs, and more importantly, they also have the Kalashnikov AK-47. So popular, it's been popularized in Hollywood movies, as well as the Molotov cocktail, as well being popularized in a bunch of video games, such as Max Payne video games. So in conclusion, <coughs> we know that Putin, here's a little sidebar here. Putin, if you repl replace the letter I with the letter E, in the German language, it actually means Turkey. Nerdfest! All right, going back to conclusions. 
Putin's predecessors, they spoke French all the way up to the Romanov time, the, or the Romanov, uh, let's see, <laughs> dynasty. Super Putin comic book probably won't make it to a national museum. The world will ta spend money to visit on a frequent basis, unlike, no, let's see, uh, around, unlike Napoleon and Marengo. Now you try incorporating a Russian sentence into a song of your langu language choice. Jack Johnson uh, has done a great, uh, gonna, uh, has incorporated French into his ballet slash banana pancakes medley, and Patti LaBelle with, let's say, Lady Marmalade. <coughs> <coughs> so because, let's see, Napoleon had such a, let's say, had, had a history of, or, or basically had, a, let's say, had the French monarchy just propagating French as being the official language of the, the diplomacy, and also having the French language essentially influence English. Battle of Hastings, 1066, William the Conqueror of Normans. Putin, what he needs to do is to invent time travel, whether by discovering warp 10 or Stargate as used under the right set of circumstances to change enough of history to one, replace the uh, French with Russian as the official language of diplomacy and culture, two, achieve Napoleonic victories prior to, Russian, uh, to the Russian average age of death, since how old is Putin? And three, negate the Americans' touted ability in accordance with Peter Zahan's uh, pro proclamations to nuke Putin himself if he decides to nuke everything, everything else. Not a snowball's chance in Yuma. Uh, okay. And then so for some more references, I highly recommend uh, so reading some of the books written by Peter Zahan and also if you have the opportunity, go visit the, uh, the military hotel or the Hotel d'Ambalide in Paris. It's worth your time. Kevin Bacon Game. By one degree of separation, France owes a cultural a debt of gratitude to, the, to Stalin slash Soviet Union. Well, not really Russia, but let's just say it's close enough. For chasing Marc Chagall away and painting their opera house. Thanks. If you have any more uh, so suggestions or have any, have any comments, please feel free to post them away. Till next time.